Okay. Next on the agenda is the uh, statement of understanding. And again, I realize some of the new council members may not understand what that means. You're, you're, you're about to be in agreement here. Uh, okay. So uh, the statement of understanding is a very simple four-page document that the staff wrote up years ago. It does get modified from time to time, and we tell you when it's modified. It basically describes how the council and NHGRI will conduct business. So it defines the roles and responsibilities of council. It uh, describes the limits of your authority. Uh, it describes uh, what the limits of our actions or the NHGRI staff can take without your approval, without uh, your blessing, without running it by you, basically. Um, so uh, let's dive into it. Um, there are specific types of applications that we are required to bring to the attention of the council. And these include large program project grants, institutional training grants, cooperative agreements, uh, applications that involve human or animal subjects concerns, um, and, and any that uh, require special council review or foreign applications, because there's a justification uh, that the council has to weigh in on for foreign for applications that will involve an award being made to a foreign institution. Now, uh, we operationalize this word present uh, in the form of putting them on the closed session agenda. So that is our way of presenting those applications to you. Most of the applications that appear on the closed session agenda are discussed in the closed session, obviously, but some of them are not, and they're there simply because we're required to report them to you. Okay. So everything that appears on the CSA, the closed session agenda, is a subset of all of the applications that were submitted for that particular council round. All those applications are sitting on a document called the master list. And those of you that have gone through the financial reporting and vetting process and are full standing members have access to that master list of applications. But most of the applications are not hidden from view, but you don't see them on the CSA, and they are approved in the on block vote, which will take place at the end of the closed session tomorrow. So the default assumption is that all of those applications have received an appropriate and fair review by the initial review group, and you are affirming that by approving them in the on block vote. Okay? Now, there are four actions that you as the council can take uh, on any application that we bring to your attention. You can concur with the IRG. You can defer the application to be re-evaluated. This is in the case of, a, of an, ap an application where the PI is claiming that his or her application was um, not well reviewed, that there was a flaw with the review, and it's com coming to council to adjudicate that uh, that uh, potential of it being flawed. You can recommend an application for high program priority or low program priority, or you can defer it for a different reason, that is, in your opinion, information is missing that doesn't allow you to complete your review of the application, okay? Um, there is uh, an, another way that applications can move through council, and that is through the Expedited Council Concurrence, or the ECC. There is a subcommittee of members. Uh, let's see, uh, Brent Gravely is on the ECC subcommittee, Gail Henderson is on the ECC subcommittee, and Stephen Rich is on the ECC subcommittee. He is, and he fulfilled his duty this round. About four weeks before the council meeting occurs, we send a list of these early concurrent applications to, those, to that subcommittee, and they are given an approval, okay? Tentative approval. Uh, now, why do we do this? Well, most of the applications that are in the ECC report uh, are small business proposals. They are certain types of LC applications. They are funded by set-asides. So even if there were, uh, even if in your view, these were not high pro priority applications, we could not reprogram that money for other purposes, okay? You do get a report of all the applications that were on the ECC that is in the closed session agenda. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But the subcommittee reviews them 
uh, in almost every case, approves them, and why are we doing this? This allows us to spread the work to the grants administration branch. Otherwise, they're deluged three times a year immediately following every council meeting. So we allow them to start working on these awards a little upstream of the council meeting, and it makes their life uh, simpler. Staff authorities. So these are the things that the staff can do without apprising the council or seeking your approval or permission. Uh, supplement awards can be made to any grant uh, up to 25% of the total cost of the grant over all three, four, five years, however many years of funding, okay? In addition, uh, not necessarily in addition to that, staff can also award an extra year of funding at the council approved level to any grant, again, for three, four, or five years. Staff can also do both, can give a supplement award and extend a grant by one year. Now, every year you will see a listing, again, in the closed session, in the, in the CSA, sorry, in the Electronic Council Book, actually, a listing of all the supplement awards that were made in the previous round, that is to say, since the September Council meeting. So we make the data available to you, and you can see what's been done, but these are actions that the staff can take without bringing them to council. If staff wants to go beyond that, extend a grant for more than one year, make a supplement award beyond 25%, it will come to the council, it will be presented by the staff, a staff analysis will be provided, and you will vote to approve or disapprove that supplement request. Okay, and then I think there are a couple of other clauses uh, in the event of national emergencies or weather catastrophes that we can conduct the uh, council meeting by electronic format. So if this snow had really amounted to anything that prevented you from getting here, you'll get information generally by for a WebEx and we, we would convene that way. All right, so I think that's the highlights. Did I leave anything out? I'm looking at Deanna. Okay. So uh, I really encourage you to have a look at this document. It's very short, it's very straightforward, it's easy to understand, and it's the uh, rules of engagement uh, for you to follow. There are no substantial changes from last year's uh, uh, statement of understanding. If there are no questions, I will ask council to approve the statement of understanding. Can I get a motion, please, and a second? All in favor, any opposed, any abstentions? We've got this chant down, don't we? Okay, thank you very much.